We're in the tea aisle to grab some rooibos tea, which is in fact actually a herb, technically. Brew up some rooibos tea and you end up with a fruity and slightly sweet, delicious beverage. I love it. Today though, we're gonna be using it in some cooking in a couple of different ways. We're gonna make a rooibos spice rubbed rockfish with rooibos coconut cream. I'm Michael Williams and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Can you say rooibos rubbed rockfish three times fast? I can't, so I'll cook it instead. Rooibos rubbed rockfish with rooibos coconut cream. Let's cook. This is one of my favorite recipes. I love this. Just came up with it one day. I was thinking, you know, what different spices could I use in a spice rub? And I thought rooibos tea, delicious, flavorful, fruity. So we'll get to that later. We're gonna start off with our sauce though. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna chop up some onions. So a nice fine dice on my yellow onion here. I'm gonna get my beautiful knife here and I'm going to cut a fine dice onto this onion. So how I approach this, I'm gonna cut the top. Actually, that was the bottom. Wasn't that maybe, nope, that was the top. I don't know, one of them. Top and the bottom, off the onion. Doesn't matter which order you do it in, as I just demonstrated. Now, cut it in half like so, and that allows us to peel the onion really easily. And you just gotta play it by ear. Sometimes you need to gauge. Sometimes you need to go an extra layer. Sometimes, you know, the skin turns into the flesh halfway through, so use your judgment. Keep your station clean. And now, this is the chef way of dicing an onion. So, with your knife, nice sharp knife, I'm gonna hold this onion in place right here with just this little heel part of my hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut into it. And again, this, you know, I would only try this with a really sharp knife, and I would only try this with some level of comfort with the knife, absolutely. So you, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting levels into the onion, and I'm gonna stop before I get all the way through. Okay, so we've got three cuts up there. I'm gonna cut down like so. And I'm doing many, many cuts because I'm looking for a fine dice here. And with this cut, same thing again, I have not cut this section of the onion, so it's holding everything together right there. Now we're ready to make our final cut. This onion's perfectly shaped still, and when you do that final cut, you end up with a perfectly fine diced onion. Beautiful. So that is going to be one of the major flavor components of our rooibos coconut cream. Very handy tool right there. This is my pastry bench knife. Love this thing. Keep my station clean and organized. So ginger, believe it or not, you do not need to peel your ginger. All you need to do is clean it up. Make sure there's no blemishes. Wash it really well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut Get it nice and stable. That'll probably be enough for us. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice this as thin as I can. Really take your time. Go as thin as you absolutely can, as much time as you need. And once we get it sliced this way, we're gonna slice again this way, and we're gonna end up with a very beautiful, fine julienne. And so there's the next big flavor component in our rooibos coconut cream. Now I've got a hot pot that this is gonna go into. So let's get some coconut oil into the pot. I love using coconut oil. I don't use it every day, every time I cook, but it's definitely an oil that I like to incorporate into my cooking. This is virgin coconut oil, so it's unprocessed. We're gonna get in our ginger. And I've got a little bit more onion than I need, so I'm probably I'm gonna grab most of that. We'll go about that much. And what I wanna do is just saute that. And I wanna, I wanna put the slightest little bit of brown on it, just a tiny bit, but I'm not looking to caramelize it really hard. Just a little bit of brown, more of a sweat than a saute. So big difference between sweating and sauteing is you're not adding color when you're sweating. You're trying to remove some of the moisture, concentrate the flavors down, soften the vegetable up, and that's what we're after here without caramelizing too much. So this is a very delicate sauce. And the next step, once we've sweat, is we're gonna add in our coconut milk. But I'm gonna let it go for a few more minutes. Now, actually, let me show you a trick with coconut milk. When it comes to selecting a good can of coconut milk, you wanna give it a shake. When you shake it and you feel and hear nothing, that's the sign of a nice, rich coconut milk. 
Cheap coconut milk will be watered down and when you shake it, it's just like, you know, you can feel and hear that liquid sloshing around. You don't want that. You're paying for the richness of coconut milk, so let's get it. Okay, while we're waiting for the onions and the ginger to finish sweating, we're gonna make our spice rub. So, this is gonna be a rooibos spice rub. There's gonna be rooibos tea leaves. There's gonna be some chili flakes. There's gonna be some Vancouver Island smoked salt and some coriander seed, wonderful. So the first thing we're gonna do, oh, and actually let's not forget delicious cane sugar. First thing we wanna do here is open up our tea bags. Now you can use loose leaf tea as well if you have it, absolutely. Crack them open and then pour them in to your little bowl. This is what we're gonna use to make our spice rub. Now, instead of breaking out the measuring spoons, we're just gonna eyeball it. This is how I make my spice rubs. I love doing it like this. I'm all about saving time in the kitchen. So, rooibos tea, coriander, smoked salt, chili flakes. See how easy this is? Beautiful organic cane sugar. So right there, check it out. We've got roughly equal portions of each of them. And all we need to do now is stir. Just break that cane sugar up if you need to, if it's in a little bit of chunky action. And look at that, incredible. So that is gonna go on our rockfish a little bit later when we cook it. I'll set that aside for now. Let's get our sauce finished. So if you take a look at the pot here, you can see that things have started changing a little bit. It's become a little bit translucent. Those onions are starting to soften up. We're ready to add in our coconut milk. So in goes whole can, just like that. We're gonna bring that up to a simmer. And once it's nice and hot, which won't take too long, then we're gonna add in some more rooibos tea. So I'm gonna, I really wanna bring the flavor out. The rooibos is super delicate, so we wanna use quite a few. I've got four, yeah, four bags maybe, four. Let's do that, four bags. So once this comes to a simmer, we'll kinda concentrate it down a little bit. In goes the rooibos tea, season it with a little bit of salt, pepper, and we're gonna finish it with lime juice and lime zest, and that is gonna be the sauce to go with our rooibos rubs uh, rockfish. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our rooibos rubbed rockfish with rooibos coconut cream. But before that, we're heading out on the road. See you soon. is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions, an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. One of the best things about being a chef on the west coast of Vancouver Island is seafood. We have an abundance of it. I'm here with the fish lady, Emily. Of course. Looks like you're ready for action. I'd shake your hand, but... Uh, <laughs> Always am ready for action. That's awesome. You have a beautiful case set up here. Why well, don't you tell you. us a little bit about uh, your seafood program? So we try to keep it as local and as fresh as possible. Yeah. Uh, for right now, what we have fresh and local. Well, since it's in season, we try to carry fresh sockeye. Yeah. And then we have, also since it's in season, fresh halibut. Yeah. We have... Generally, we have great cod, local clams as Love well. Clams. Of course, yeah. everybody does. Yeah. Um, fresh sole, that's one of the things we can get year round local okay. fresh. Okay. Um, we also have ahi tuna, that's yeah. fresh as well. Very, very tasty stuff. Salt Spring mm -hmm. Island mussels? Yeah, we have our Salt Spring Island mussels, nice. which everybody likes the mussels. It's a nice white wine sauce or something. Yeah. <laughs> I actually came specifically for that right there. This The that, rockfish. That, that, that's, that's a scary looking fish, but yeah. <laughs> that's what it is, is that, that and fillets. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody likes rockfish. Yeah. It's very nice, light fish. Great for fish tacos, fish soups, throw it on the barbecue. Awesome, I'm gonna make a rooibos spice rub rockfish. Ooh. And uh, you know what, the, the bones. Some people, you know, try to pick them out with the tweezers like you can with salmon. You can't yeah. do that with rockfish. No, they stick in there. Why don't you show me how you cut the bones out? Yeah, for sure, I'll okay. show you how I cut the bones out. Let's go back here. Awesome. Looks like we're uh, all set up here for a little rockfish demonstration. Yes, we are. Yeah. So I'll show you how to debone it. 
Um, so what we do is we feel down here, see if you can feel any bones. You feel them sticking up, so you start about here. Yep. You make one line there, and one there, and you pull that out, and that's the bone. Right, and you can just double check and make sure that there's, yeah, there's exactly. none left, right? You, yep. You'll feel if it feels like there's a sliver or something in there, yeah. and you still have some bones. Yeah. If it's smooth, and there's nothing left. Right on. So fresh year-round, like that's one of the awesome things about exactly. rockfish. I think the only things that kind of slow down getting fresh rockfish is really rough seas, right? So yeah. like major storms. In the winter. the fishermen don't want to head out and that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but, no, uh, you don't want to be going out on white caps. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, but super flexible, delicious fish. I love oh, working yeah. with it so much. Uh, you mentioned fish tacos. That's yeah. one of my favorite ways to use it. Very, very versatile. Yeah. Firmer fish too, so it's a little bit easier to work with compared yeah. to some things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Looks like you got something else here I for do. me to taste. I do have some things for you to sample. Yeah. So I have a maple local uh, smoked nugget. Yeah. And then I have a original and then I have a pepper. They're I, all sockeye I, I, nuggets. I, I'm going to dig right into the pepper, man. Oh, I, go for it. I love candied salmon. And this is made on the island. Yes, it is. Mm. I love the texture, the flavor. I mean, salmon's already incredible. But how can you go wrong turning it into candy? Of course. Right? <laughs> it's a sweet so and good. savory. <laughs> yeah. Emily, thank you so much. It's been awesome hanging out and learning about what you do here. Definitely. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>
So I'm just going to add a little bit more oil to the pan because we want to keep things well lubricated, otherwise we will burn too much, absolutely. So I want to get a little bit of oil under that fish. We'll let it continue. And you know what, in fact, there is enough residual heat in this pan to finish cooking. So we are ready to pull that off the heat. We're going to get our other pan on. We're going to let that heat up. Let's take a look at our sauce. You remember before I talked about plunking those rooibos tea bags in once it reduced down a little bit. Well, I've done that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to squeeze. Look at that. I'm going to squeeze all of the flavor out of those tea bags because we really want to capitalize on that lovely rooibos flavor. Oh, that looks awesome. So all that needs now to finish off, a little bit of seasoning, some salt, and pepper is wonderful. And you know what, I'm just gonna leave it for now. And I, I, I mentioned lime, zeus, lime, lime zest and lime juice, I mentioned that. I'm actually gonna finish the dish once it's plated with a nice little sprinkling of lime zest and a nice, nice little squeeze of lime juice. So, sauce is good to go. Our pan is looking hot. So, this is another scenario, I talked about it with the fish where we want that pan really smoking hot. Same with this, I only want a quick flash in the pan for our zucchini here. So I can see that our pan is really nice and ready. So in goes just a little bit of oil again and right away we can get our zucchini in there. Right on. So. We're gonna let that go for maybe a minute, maybe a minute and a half at the most. In the meantime, let's get ready to plate. Clear out some space here. Get organized. Let's give our zucchini a stir, because it's almost there, folks. Let's give our sauce a bit of a stir, and we're actually gonna start with our sauce. Check this out. Just gonna pour it right onto the plate. And I'm gonna be fairly healthy about portion here. A nice good dose of that rooibos coconut cream. Look at the color on that, isn't that beautiful? Oh boy, my mouth is watering, the smells are incredible. This zucchini looks amazing, so now we can put our zucchini on the plate. Let's turn that off so it doesn't keep talking to us. And I'm just going to, like so, drop that zucchini down. Oh boy, I'm getting happy. Are you guys getting happy? I'm getting happy. This, this, is, this, is, this is coming together nicely. Our fish is now gonna go on top. Look at that. We could not leave that behind. There you have it, folks. Rooibos rubbed rockfish with rooibos coconut cream. Pairings are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the plus. This rockfish dish needs a great partner. Let's explore a beverage pairing. Bailey. Blue Grouse Vineyard, is that right? That is correct. Okay, Thank and you. Cowichan Valley. So grapes grown really close to home. That is right here on the island. Yeah. I uh, I was watching you do this and I think the uh, the combination of the the bit of spice in the coconut milk and the rub on the uh, on the fish is a great pairing for the Blue Grouse Estate Ortega. Okay. Let me open this. Okay, sounds delicious. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm just gonna dive right into mine. I've been waiting to taste this for a little while. So I'm gonna start with my rockfish. Why don't you uh, grab yourself a fork there? Actually, just one second, let me, little, just a little squeeze oh, of lime. That's, that's the way to finish it right there. Go for it. Beautiful, thank you. So yeah, lots of flavor happening in that rub. The richness of the coconut cream. Let's mm -hmm. see how you're pairing. Pairs up. Cheers. That's nice. I love it. There is 
a lot of abundance of flavor happening in this wine, and it really does. It complements this dish wonderfully. I'm loving it. I think uh, I think what makes it really work is the minerality and the acidity in the wine. The minerality, I like that. Okay. And um, and the and the the rub on the fish. Yeah. They really complement each other well. Yeah. Agreed. Cheers to that. Tell me a little bit about Blue Grouse Vineyard. You guys have been around for how long? The winery has been around since the early 90s. Okay. And we had a, a there was a change in ownership in 2012 yeah and we built a brand new architecturally I've designed heard, building I've heard about this place it sounds fantastic so I, I would like to cook there one day in the Cowichan Valley too I always love going to the Cowichan Valley it's so beautiful well it is it is a fantastic place it's uh, it's one of the cool climate uh, wine growing regions in all of Canada yeah and uh, and I think that it makes uh, beautiful wines that are are vibrant and, uh, and nuanced and, and really pair well with food, especially right. the seafood that we get here on the West Coast. And you guys have a full lineup of wines, of course. We have a bunch more wines from this. Okay. Um, and so you can find anything to pair awesome. with your uh, I'm dinner. I'm gonna be checking them out. They, 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 this is fantastic. So, thank you so much for being here today, Bailey. My pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Uh, check out our website where you find the lowdown on today's show. I'm Michael Williams. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, dinner's better when we eat it together. Have a, have a bite, let's get into this.